and welcome to episode 35 of the She Must Knit podcast. My name is Erin, and thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you guys had a great week. I had a long, long week. If you're one of my regular viewers, you may have noticed that this episode is going up a little bit later than usual, but there was just so much going on this week. And if you're a hermit like myself, anything that makes you go outside your normal schedule, like more than like maybe one extra thing, uh, it's just too much. So aside from, you know, our normal activities after school, we also had um, a parent teacher meetings this week and we had something for Avery's first communion. We had a retreat that we had to go to. And then Friday was a PA day. So I had Avery with me all day. And Fridays are usually when I record, and there just was not an opportunity. We went to visit my mom, um, and she got to spend the day with grandma. So I had to just push things a little bit later in the week. But I actually still have some things to share with you, and I'm surprised at how much I got done considering how the week started off. I had a lot of work to do this week in terms of um, clubs and uh, custom orders and stuff like that. So my daytime knitting was greatly reduced and then we had so many things going on in the evenings that my, ba my evening knitting was basically kaput. Like I just did not feel like working on anything in the evenings either. So come Wednesday, I basically had no progress on anything and I was like, oh my goodness, this week is going to be a complete flop. But things picked up after Wednesday, and I do have some things to share with you. I have um, some finished spinning. I have two projects that you have not seen. I was inspired this week to cast on something new, um, and I ended up casting on something else new that I wasn't planning on, but I will explain why. This week, every time I seem to want to work on something, it was just a process. I get it, it, nothing just happened right away. Like I, you'll, I'll explain it later. So what do I have for you? I have some spinning, like I said, I have some new projects, I have um, my collection from the fabrics that were voted on from the last time, I have some new fabrics, and then I also have some shop news in terms of my 2019 Mystery Club, I have some information on that. So that's a lot to cover, let's get started. I've got my tea, it's pretty late in the evening, actually no, it's not, I'm, I'm a liar, it's not late in the evening, it's late in the afternoon. Um, Avery's at a birthday party right now, so I have a little bit of time to myself in a quiet house. So I've got my hot tea, I've got um, Seven Sisters tea and baked apple, so that's what I've got. Mm, delicious. And when I was making my tea, um, I noticed that my tea cupboard is looking a little empty. So I think I'm going to be able to place an order for some new flavor soon, which is very exciting. So I think the first thing... I am going to share with you is my spinning because that was the most straightforward project this week. It gave me no trouble. I just had to, I think last uh, week I showed you the start of the little rainbow minis that I was doing for my Rainbow Dash um, inspired sweater that I am making for Avery. And I was hoping that I could finish those off and I did. So I was able to do the singles for all the little minis and then I put them into like little cakes and then I two plied them on themselves to get the finished yarn. And there you go, you can see all the pretty colors in their little balls. I decided to wind them into balls instead of mini skeins because then I would just have to unravel the mini skeins to use them and this way they are all set to go. So as a reminder, I had done these two skeins. I have two of these um, and this is the blue for the body of Rainbow Dash. And then I'm going to be doing the sleeves using these minis. And before, I had expressed concern that there, I wasn't really getting a lot of yardage. At least when I spun the singles, it didn't seem like I was getting a lot of yardage. And now that I've two-plied them, I estimated uh, I have about um, 10 yards of each color, which doesn't seem like a lot. I'm hoping it's enough to do just like two stripes of each color on the sleeves, and I might... Um, introduce, I think when I expressed this concern in um, the last video, um, there were some comments below that maybe I could bring in, you know, a color in between the stripes just to stretch it out a little bit. I might do that. Um, but yeah, as long as I get at least two rows of each color. Or the other thing I was thinking about is doing these stripes in order of the rainbow um, so that like, you know, the all the warmer tones were on one sleeve and then the cooler tones were on the other sleeve. 
I'll have to play around with that when I get to this project. It will not be until the new year. It is a project that is on my 2019 bingo card. I think I filled up all my card for 2019. I know I'm getting ahead of myself because I haven't even put the thread up for, you know, the group, but that's one of the perks of being the creator, right? So I've got my card ready and that thread will be up soon if you're interested in participating in that. But I finished all my little minis. I've got my two main skeins. That project is basically ready to go in the new year. And that was a square on my card, like I said, and it completed a row. It actually filled two rows. So I got two bingos on my card with that spinning project. So now I have three full bingos on my card. I, I will not block out my card, but I got three lines so far. So that's the one thing I worked on this week that was a sure win. It went well. It was easy peasy. Um, but my knitting. Oh my god, guys, my knitting. I had the inkling. I just really, really, really wanted to cast on a children's garment because uh, another square on my bingo card is to complete three kid garments as gifts. And so far this year, I have completed two. So if I complete one more by the end of the year, I can block out that square as well. And I had been thinking about making something for my friend's little girl and maybe giving it to her for Christmas. And I think I had mentioned before, after I had finished Avery's uh, Little Miss Margot, that I thought that would be a really, really nice project to make for my friend. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I am going to cast on a Little Miss Margot. It's such a quick project. It's it's such a pleasant pro uh, project that um, it'll be it'll be fine. And especially if I use a chunkier yarn like the pattern called for, it would just whiz by. So this is where it starts. This is the start of my knitting journey this week because all the projects I seem to be working on, just I kept having to change things. Um, so I haven't ripped this out yet, but this is the yarn that I had in my stash that I thought would be fun. I bought this, I think, on one of the yarn crawls, not this past year, but maybe the year before in the summer. And I had three of these that I was thinking of making Avery some sort of cardigan with or something like that. But I have three balls and I'm not sure if that would be enough for a full garment. So I thought, oh, this will be really nice to make um, the poncho with and it's a chunky so it will knit up a little faster. So I started it and you can see this is the start of the Little Miss Margot poncho. You can see the... Um, the stitch pattern, the slip stitch pattern in the middle there, and the ribbing. This is as far as I got. And I just thought by looking at it that I was like, these colors are really, really pretty. And I don't think the stitch pattern is going to be um, as evident as if I had used a semi-solid or a solid, but I don't really have any in a, a chunky weight. And I just thought this yarn was better served in a different pattern because the, the color repeats are, are long enough that it's kind of striping. And I thought, you know what would be really, really cool is to use this yarn on the sleeves of a sweater, um, kind of like how I want to do with the Rainbow Dash, but just with, with this yarn instead and for my friend. Um, but I was like, if I can find a sweater pattern that is like a dropped shoulder or like, like a bottom-up sweater where the sleeves will start lower, then I can just use that yarn for the sleeves and then find something else for the body and that, that would be really cute. So I was going all through my Ravelry library and um, my books and trying to find something that was either a free pattern or something that I already had because I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to buy a new pattern for this. I have lots of patterns. And lo and behold, when I did a search within my library, a pattern popped up and it was exactly what I wanted. It was a uh, bottom up kind of drop shoulder, um, drop sleeve kind of sweater. And it was using a chunky weight yarn. And I was like, perfect. So this is the Icelandic pullover. And that's the finished sweater there. Now I'm going to be changing some things. You might be able to guess, but I'm using this as a basis to get my numbers and the sizing and stuff. And this is from this book here. Um, I have to say, I have de-stashed quite a bit of my uh, knitting library book, but these quick knit books are ones that I hang on to because I find a surprising number of patterns in there when I need something kind of like last minute like this. So I am making this sweater and the yarn weight worked out and the sizing worked out. Um, I think mostly with this book, they only, most of the patterns are just sizes two, four, and six. So I am doing the size six 
because I think the yarn I'm using is a bit thinner than um, the chunkier yarn that they are calling for. So I started off with the sleeves. And the other challenge I had was finding a, a yarn to do the body with that would go with the rainbow yarn. So searching through my stash, I found something else that I had picked up on a yarn crawl. And it was that sprite. Um, it was this one here. And can you guess who I picked this out for? I had originally bought this to make something for Avi as well. Like, she loves pink, and this is pink. Um, so I was like, oh, this might be really cute as the body. I will use this. And holding them side by side, even though they're both labeled as a chunky yarn, um, the pink is a fair bit thicker than the rainbow. But I was like, you know what? I'll just make it work. So I finished the sleeve. Here we go. I read it. This, this is the first part of this whole knitting saga. So I finished a sleeve. The sleeve was super quick. I knit this up in maybe an evening. Um, I started like uh, after dinner and I was up at the top by the time um, after Avery went to bed and I had a little bit more time. I finished this in an evening. And here you can see I added the pink and it is a little bit thicker, but I think it would be okay. So I was like, okay, we're just going to keep going with this. I think it'll be fine. But then something made me look more closely at this yarn label. And right on it, because it's 70% acrylic and 30% wool, and right on the washing instructions, it says to hand wash. Um, so I don't know if that means that the wool in there is not super wash. I guess I assumed when it was acrylic and wool that it was like a washable um, yarn, like you often see with um, acrylic, like high content acrylic and wool mixes. But it says hand wash on it. And if this was for Avery, I would just go ahead and I would just continue on with it because um, I very rarely, A, she doesn't need her, her hand knits washed very often. And if I can't put it in the machine, I'm fine with soaking or spraying or, or whatever. But this is going to my friend and I don't know even if I told her, oh, like, you know, you need to just soak that. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to have to make her do that. Um, everything I've given her in the past has been made with yarn that she could just throw in the washer, throw in the dryer if she needs to and not worry about it. And I kind of want this to be along the same lines, especially since this rainbow part definitely is um, acrylic and washable. So I thought poop. Okay, plan B. I need to search through my stash because I'm not buying yarn this year and see if I can find something else that will work, that will look good with this rainbow, that will work with the pattern that I'll have enough for the body, can I do this? And so I went through my stash, I looked through my stash on Ravelry first, and then I went into the basement. And I have a basement stash, which is kind of my, um, it's all kind of stuff that I don't gravitate to first, but I can't bring myself to get rid of because often enough I do find something in there that will work for a project. And so I went down into the basement stash, and I found some Brava. Uh, this is an acrylic worsted from Knit Picks, and it's actually a really, really nice worsted, but it is a little thinner than the rainbow yarn. Only a touch. I think the rainbow yarn is actually thinner than um, your standard chunky, even though it says it's a chunky. So it's actually closer to um, this worsted yarn than it was the pink chunky yarn. So I brought this out, and I liked how it looked with the rainbow. So I left the first sleeve and because I can very easily rip out that little bit of pink at the top and do it with the purple. And I started the second sleeve. So I finished the second sleeve. Here's the second sleeve. And you can see the purple brought in at the top. And I quite like the contrast that this purple um, brings against the rainbow. Like that color is not in here, but I think it really complements these warmer pinks and purples down here. So I quite like that. So I was like, perfect. Got that. Two sleeves done. So let's do the body. Now, with this purple yarn, I only had this full ball and I had a partial ball. I'm hoping it's enough for the body, but just in case, I decided to use some of the leftovers um, of the rainbow yarn. So when I did the sleeves, I had enough in one ball to do um, the first sleeve and then I had to, because I wanted the sleeves to match, you can see I got them to match really, really well. So they're a perfect, they're pretty much a perfect match. And to do that, I had to wind out a little bit of the center to get before I could start the second sleeve. So I used that um, portion that I took out from doing the sleeves to do the ribbing on the bottom of the sweater. And this is how far I've gotten on the bottom. 
So this is where we are with this. You can see I've got the ribbing done and then I've brought in um, the purple Bravo yarn. And I quite like, I actually really like how this looks with it. So this is now smooth sailing. I've gotten over all of those little hiccups and I feel pretty confident about where this is going now. So now I just have to knit the body up to the armpits um, and then join the sleeves. And I will admit that I have done sweaters like this before with the top, uh, bottom, up with the two sleeves and you join and that joining process is probably one of my least favorite things to do um, with garment creation but I'll get through it and I do like the rest of the process because once those sleeves are on it's like you're decreasing and you're it's just you zoom through the rest of the project so I will get through it it'll be fine I find when you use uh, if, you, if you use multiple needles to do it instead of trying to get it all to work on one needle it's much easier uh, and then the only thing else that I'm going to add about this project is that I am not going to be doing this full color work yoke, but what I think I'm going to try doing is bringing in that rainbow yarn again, just where you see that middle part with the green, um, and you see those little like orange uh, blips that they're bringing in, I'm going to do that whole part with the rainbow. So it's going to be an actual like rainbow chevron going through the yoke of the sweater and I think that will be kind of pretty. I think it will pop nicely off the purple um, and it will use a bit more of the purple or the, it will bring the rainbow yarn in a bit more so that hopefully the purple yarn will go further if I need it to. So that's where we're going with that project and I quite like um, the direction that's, that is heading and it's in a very easy place to knit and I think that's what I really wanted this week. Like with everything going on um, I just didn't want to work on any of my very thought-involved projects. Like, okay, you might notice by the end of this that there will be no mention of the Santa pillows. And those darn Santa pillows, I was supposed to work on those this week. This was going to be the week that I dedicated all my daytime knitting to the Santa pillows to try and um, get further on that project. And like I said, I just, I did not have a lot of daytime knitting and it's a, it's very much a project that I have to sit down, I have to concentrate on, I had to do the charts. I had no time or mind space for that project this week. I have not touched the Santa pillows. So we'll see how that project goes to finish by the end of, or in time for Christmas, we will see. But instead, I was like, okay, well, I'm working on this and, you know, I kind of want to work on another project too. Maybe I can bring one out from the vault, one of my very, very old whips, and maybe I can work on that a little bit. And the one that I had been thinking about. I showed this, I think, in the episode where I brought out all my old whips and I went through them and I decided which ones am I going to get rid of in Frog and which ones am I going to try and finish for the end of the year because um, another one of my bingo goals is to end the year with no more than five old whips and I'm labeling old whips as something started not this year, so 2017 or earlier. This is one of them. This is one of my old whips. I either started this last year or the year before. I do not remember. I got so far on them and I had just lost complete interest in them. And one of the reasons for that was that I was making them for myself. And usually if I'm making something for myself, um, I just don't have the same drive to finish it, even if I really, really want the finished object. It usually takes me much longer to finish items for myself than it does to finish things for other people. So these are my Karen double lined mitts and this is the lining part and this is done with like, um, it's got, like, I think it's like bison or something, it's got some sort of fiber in it that makes it super, super soft, super, super warm and I thought this would be perfect for a layered mitt and I've got the lining part done on the first mitt and I had started the outside of the first mitt. Um, and that yarn is, it's a hedgehog uh, DK and it's very, very pretty. But I wasn't working on these mitts, and so I thought, you know what, what if I were to finish these mitts as a Christmas gift for my mother-in-law? I think she would really like them, you know, the inside is very luxurious, it would keep her hands warm, they're very pretty. That's what I'll do, I'll finish it as a Christmas gift, and that will motivate me to get them done, and if I really, really decide I want some, I can make some for myself later on, or quite honestly, I'd be perfectly happy just wearing store-bought fleece line gloves or something. So that was my new thought. Let's get back to these mitts. Let's finish them as a Christmas gift. Get them out of my stash. 
So what I actually ended up doing was bringing them um, yesterday, so the PA day, we went to my mom's house all day. I brought them with me to force myself to work on them because I was like, I'm on the mitt, like I'm on the top part of the mitt. Surely, surely we can get a good portion of this mitt done. I kid you not, I literally did four rows on this. So I did from where that stitch marker is up. That's all I did at my mom's. And I was like, I just don't want to work on this project anymore. Like, I am done with these. I have no interest. Um, as much as I think the finished project would be lovely, I'm not really enjoying doing this stitch pattern. It's super, super easy. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Uh, and I think I've decided that I am just going to frog these. I'm going to frog them, get them out of my whip pile, and potentially use the yarn for something else. I was even thinking like doubling it uh, would make a really nice fabric for, for mitts or something if I wanted to do that. Uh, but you know what? Honestly, I just want to frog them. I just want them out of my whip pile. I'm done. I'm done with this project. It's done. So I got home last night. We were at my mom's, I think, until um, about 8 o'clock. By the time I got home, it was 9. By the time Avery went to bed, it was like, okay. So by the time I had time to myself sitting down to, you know, to knit and to just decompress from the week, um, it was quite late, and I decided, well, maybe I can cast on another pair of mitts for my mother-in-law, and maybe I can cast something on in a chunky weight yarn that will go really, really, really quickly. And so I looked through my Ravelry library again, and I found another pattern that I had bought ages ago uh, with the intention of making some, myself some mittens, uh, and I even had the yarn in stash that I bought ages ago that I was going to use for myself. And I thought, this is perfect. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast on these mittens, these nice bulky mittens, and these, for sure, for sure, I will get done in time for Christmas for my mother-in-law. I cast these on, no joke, like around 10 o'clock, and this is how much I got done last night. Just last night. So like maybe an hour and a half, two hours of knitting. I almost have the complete first mitten done. So these are the Cinder Smoke mittens, and this is the first one here. And they are going so fast. I am really enjoying them so far. I could probably finish uh, this first mitt, depending on when Dennis and Avery get home tonight. After I'm done this, I might be able to finish this first mitt, and at least the hand part, maybe not the thumb, tonight. Uh, I did make one change, though. Because the pattern called for a, a tubular cast-on for the cuff, and then a, um, a ribbed cuff where you knit through the back loop, a twisted rib cuff, I don't enjoy doing twisted rib and I didn't really want to fiddle with a tubular cast on. I just wanted to start this project. What I decided to do was just cast on, knit some rows, do the uh, knit two together yarn over pico row. Um, and my thought is I'm just going to fold this under so that it's kind of like a pico cuff. And then I went into the pattern and then after I'm thinking of making a fleece lining. I'm hoping these, they're, they're kind of roomy. Um, and that's what I want because I'm thinking I'm going to do a fleece lining and bring the cuff of the fleece lining below here. So it's going to be like a fleece cuff and then this will just be kind of like a, de a decorative edge. Um, so that's why I didn't do a big long ribbed cuff. Also because I don't know how far uh, this ball of bulky will go because there's not a lot of yardage in it. But this is how much I got done of the mitt. And the pattern is really, really easy to do. Uh, I'm at the point now where I don't really have to refer to the pattern. I did have to refer to it while I was doing the gusset shaping, but now it's smooth sailing. I can just do it without looking at the pattern, and it's basically just a, a moss stitch, so like a double seed stitch um, for the, the uh, palm and the back of the hand. So you're doing the same thing all around, and then the designer has done these slip stitches um, around, you can kind of see there, around the gusset, um, and then on the other side of the, the hand there, just to add a little um, interest. And then also she said that this the ones here add a little bit of stability. So this pattern is now going really, really well. I'm really happy with it. It's going super duper fast. I could see if you had time um, over a weekend just to sit and knit and like binge watch something, uh, you could easily get a pair of these done. So... I'm going to see if I can get this pair done, and if I can, and I'm still enjoying the pattern and the motivation is still there, I'm thinking of maybe making um, a pair of these for Avery's teacher. I've been trying to figure out something to make for Avery's teacher, 
and I think these might be useful, especially if I did the fleece lining for like, you know, if they're out on yard duty, just to keep the hands extra toasty warm. And honestly, if she doesn't want to use them, that's fine too. But I think they'll be, I think they'll still be a very nice gift. And at the interview, Avery, she was telling me all about how Avery talks about all the knitting that mommy does and um, shows her every time that she's, she goes to school wearing something knitting. So she knows that I knit and I think if she knew that I knit, the mitts for her she might be appreciative so we'll see she seems like a very nice lady so I don't mind um, knitting something for her so those are my knitting projects this week I'm ending the week feeling very positive about them even though earlier in this week like as of Wednesday I felt like I had accomplished absolutely nothing with my crafting and I even with the spinning I started um, really getting back into finishing the that fiber on Wednesday I was like come on just finish the fiber you're so close um, and it took me a, a little bit over an hour to get that done and then I found that that started to give me the momentum to get some other to work on some other projects um, so yeah I'm ending the week feeling happy with my my progress even though I did not touch the Santa pillows we are gonna have to bring those out next week I think I think next week is gonna be a more calm week um, and I think we're gonna have to tackle those Santa pillows again because you know I really want to finish those uh, so finally, I have the collection and then the new vote for the next collection. And then also I wanted to talk a little bit about my 2019 Mystery Club because I've got everything sorted out now. It's all on the website and ready to go. So the last fabrics that I showed you were, uh, I believe, the monkeys and then some kind of autumn toned butterflies and the monkeys one so I went with the monkeys and I think they are absolutely adorable and as always I'm very happy with how this collection turned out so I was able to get three bags done this is the first one here and this is the sidekick nice big bag it's good for two to three skeins definitely like a shawl project or a small garment it's perfect for it I was able to get one regular pouch done and then I had a little bit extra and I decided to do one of my larger Notion pouches. I think I'm going to get back into making these um, for the shop when I have the appropriate size fabric because I have had some people ask about Notion pouches, but I had kind of gotten out of making them. Um, but I think I'd like to start them again because that way for when show season starts next year, I will have some Notion pouches to bring with me. So those are the bags, and then for the yarn, I was able to do a 100 gram skein of a 75-25 mix, and so I just did the pale kind of minty green, and then the speckles of um, the pinks and reds and grays, and then I was also able to do a sock set. And for the sock set, I did a light gray mini. So that's the sock set, and then there's a 100 gram skein, and then the bags. And for the next fabric vote, I have two fabrics for you, and I think both are very cute. I like the colors. They're not seasonal, but whatever. You know, you just, you, you work with the prints that you like. And I have this nice, bright succulents. And then I also have, when I asked you guys about what kind of prints that you wanted, um, a number of you said you liked birds. So I have this really, really pretty bird fabric. And I think the colors in here are very pretty as well. So those are your choices for this week. You have the succulents or the birds. Let me know down below and um, yeah, I will get ready. I will get the next collection ready in another two weeks. And just remember that any comments on any of the videos, regardless of if it's for the collection or just a general comment, always go towards a, um, a coupon for my shop that I draw at the beginning of each month. So the only thing left I have to talk about is my new mystery club. So my 2019 mystery club, I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently than this past year where I had a mystery sock blank club. Um, for 2019, I'm going to be introducing a few more options so that it doesn't have to be just sock blanks. Um, I'm introducing 100 gram sock skeins, sock sets, uh, sock blanks like there was before and then also there's going to be the option for adding accent skeins so um, most of the yarns that I dye I do in my normal speckled way and if you choose to add an accent skein to your package um, I would be dyeing it in a semi uh, semi solid or tonal um, color to go with the main speckled skein so you get to choose all from all different kind of yarn options 
And then you also get to choose whether you want the notions added. So with my previous club, every month you would get a sock blank, uh, matching stitch markers, and a matching progress keeper to go with the theme. Uh, for my next 2019 club, you will have the choice of adding stitch markers or the progress keeper um, if you want them. And if you don't, you don't have to choose to add those to your package. Um, and then I'm also going to be doing a optional bag for every third month. And I should mention the theme for the next club that I'm doing is going to be a travel theme. And every quarter I've picked a different continent. And so for the three months within that quarter, um, I've found inspiration images from that continent. And those are going to be the colors that I'm going to be drawing from when I create uh, the colorways either on the yarn or the sock blanks. So every three months there will be an optional bag that you can add to your package and that fabric uh, will be something that, cor that corresponds with the theme of that month. So I'm very excited. I've figured out all the images that I'm going to be using as inspiration for the entire year. If you'd like to check those out, uh, you can go to the Bling Your String group in Ravelry. There is a thread for the 2019 Mystery Club. I've got all the pictures there. And as I had it, done it before, you don't have to buy them in three month blocks. You can purchase it month by month. So you can pick and choose the months depending on what images might um, appeal to you. But if you were to get a three-month block, you get a slight discount in the overall shipping. Uh, so if you like all three images, then it's usually more beneficial to get the three-month block because you get a little bit of a discount on the shipping. But if you want to just pick and choose, then you can always just choose them month by month. So that's all in the group if you want to see the images and then also um, the listings for January, February, and March individually as well as January, February, March as a group are on the website now. So that is all I have for you this week. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend even though it is half done. Um, I hope you did have a lovely, lovely week and you got lots of things done and you'll get lots of crafting done for the rest of the weekend. And hopefully I will, hopefully you will see some Santa pillows next week, but we will see. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely rest of the weekend and a very crafty one at that and I will talk to you soon. Bye.